They're multi-platinum superstars and one of the world's hottest bands. They've inspired millions and annoyed countless more. They began as basement unknowns that hit the brakes while on top of the world. So the question is, how did three tattooed punks from suburban San Diego go on to become one of the rudest, lewdest, most successful bands in the world today? Blink-182 was born to be. My mother always wanted me to be a lawyer. A doctor. An architect like my father. My dad insisted on medical school. I was always expected to be a part of the family business. A bank manager. But I was born to be. Southern California in the early 90s was a scene where three things ruled. Skateboarding, surfing, and punk rock. Los San Diego is uh, lots of ladies, lots of parties, and lots of, uh, what else, Tom? Lots of water. Just boobs as far as you can see. Hi, my name's Mark. Mark Hoppus was born in Ridgecrest, a tiny town in the high desert of California. Hey, I'm from California, I can say it's rad. From the beginning, starting a band was all Mark could think about. When he was just 15, his father gave him his first bass guitar and amp in return for helping to paint their house. My dad is a very loving father. He's a cool guy. He started a punk band called Of All Things. My parents kind of just uh, bite their upper lip and, and bear it. But in a town populated mostly by naval engineers, they never got beyond playing parties and bonfires. And we just wanted to play a small club in San Diego. That was our biggest dream. Meanwhile, in Poway, a suburb of San Diego, Tom DeLong was writing songs between shifts at Gary's Chicken and Ribs. I am Tom DeLong, but it should be DeLonge, because I went to France, and they said, you're pronouncing it wrong, I'm all DeLong. And I was like, no, it is uh, DeLonge. And I was like, yeah, that sounds right. A troublemaker with a reputation for practical jokes, Tom got kicked out of Poway High for his rowdy behavior at a school basketball game. My parents wouldn't let me play in a band. They always used it against me every time I got in trouble. It's like, you gotta quit my band, or they didn't like the music, or it's gonna, you know. I always say, like, I think if my parents were completely into what I was doing and loved my music, I probably wouldn't be here today. Though he was in hot water at the time, this suspension would be a major turning point in his life. Actually, you know what? They never said anything or looked at me, but I just had this overall feeling that like I have everywhere I go where people just want to beat me up. So I was like, maybe I should go. Tom was transferred to Rancho Bernardo High and instantly made new friends among the skateboarder community. You know, people like me. People like hanging out with me. One of these friends was Ann Hoppus, Mark's sister. Mostly just to shut him up, Ann introduced him to her brother. The two bonded immediately over their common passions, skateboarding, punk rock, and a penchant for potty humor. We don't care, we just want to play fast music and offend people. Wiener. Party movies. There's a reason that Tom and I met, and you know, we're pretty much the same guy in two different bodies. I feel like we're brothers. They instantly began writing songs together, with Tom on guitar and Mark on bass. Uh, just as a generalization, the songs that I write the lyrics for, I sing, and the other songs that I write the lyrics for, Tom sings. <laughs> but that way, I just got that, and I don't think that's funny. From the beginning, they knew they wanted more than just a few laps jamming in Tom's garage. When you start a band, you always hope to God that you'll just end up playing in front of people. To be a proper band, they needed to fill out their sound. At a party, Tom met Scott Rayner, a local drummer also itching to start a band. The three began jamming in Scott's sound-insulated bedroom and were soon practicing every day. You start out as this punk rock fan, you know, you don't care about anything, and you just have fun, you sleep on people's boards, and you break things, and just entertain each other. They went through a series of band names reflecting their irreverent sense of humor. For a long time, we were calling ourselves Matchbox 20, but I guess somebody <laughs> else already has that name. Yeah, we were going through names like Duct Tape and Figure yeah. Eight, and we called our band Live for a while. 
but there's a band called Live, so we had to change our name. So we started with Blink. It stands for Boys Lusting Incredibly Nude Kids. <laughs> no, I don't know. I made that up years ago. It's not funny. I know. It's just a name that uh, Tom made up when we were skateboarding one night. He's like, how do we call our band Blink? Their first recorded output was the no-budget, lo-fi cassette Fly Swatter, recorded in Scott's bedroom. It was enough for them to land opening gigs in San Diego's all-ages scene. We were this stupid Sir. and lame before we started a band. And then we started a band, and then we decided to take our uh, stupid, lame antics across the world. <laughs> we want to make people happy. We want to make people horny. There's a kid in my class that got a boner at P.E. in high school. He was wearing sweatpants. It's really embarrassing, so this song goes out to him. With their silly name and stage banter that usually fixated on bodily functions, Blink would have seemed merely a joke if they weren't so serious about their music. I don't know what people think, you know, I don't know what people are saying or whatever, but no matter what, we're gonna try and make the best music we can, and, um, and we're gonna do it for ourselves. It could be something beautiful, it could be something that you never hope happens again. Let's go find out. They soon began a non-stop schedule of gigging on the local punk circuit, opening for bigger names like No Effects and Green Day who were then still a local phenomenon. We were in a bedroom, and then we moved to a garage, and then a small little club, and then it kind of grew from there. The next release, the Buddha cassette, was released by Filter Records in a run of less than 1,000. We just wanted to, to try and put out an album that somebody would actually buy in a store. You know, that was like the ultimate, possibly, to get signed to an indie label and actually put out an album. Record companies took notice, and in 1995, they signed with Cargo Records. They immediately made the trek to Los Angeles for the recording of their first actual album. When we come back, exit Blink, enter Blink 182. Out of the bedroom, into the arenas. And so long, Scott, welcome Travis. When Born to Be continues. <laughs> 